material subjected beam so let me consider this beam okay and we can uh, draw the ILD for this uh, either it is for shear force or it is for reaction or for bending moment and UDL you will take into account of two types of UDL only one is if it is longer than this one and if it is shorter than this one and for case of longer span the extra portion of the UDL is not considered in UDL okay for example if I have a beam of this span okay and a UDL of this length only this portion is considered remaining portion is not considered for constructing ILD similarly if this is this length of the beam and if I have a UDL of this length okay which is smaller than the span of the length then it will be considered at the required position of the ILD so uh, I'll go into the uh, equation which is something like this so the, you are provided with a beam of a span 15 meter subjected to a UDL shorter than the span of the beam that is only 5 meter and the question asks us to find maximum shear force and bending moment at C which is 6 meter away from the left support okay so for this a very within a few steps this problem will be solved so the very first step you have to know the shear force diagram okay that is the ILD for shear force so you can see my previous video for understanding how this shear force or ILD for shear force is constructed so I have to find at C point that is 6 meter away from the left support so this is the negative portion and this is the positive portion okay so the value of this perpendicular is A by L and for this it is B by L and make sure the progressing part of the UDL is known as head and represented by H and the latter part of the UDL is known as tail and represented by T and the equation will be given as the uniformly distributed load of 40 kN meter and 5 meter long crosses the girder, girder from left to right okay and the question asks us to find maximum shear force at 6 meter okay so the head just touches at the point C okay when the head just touches the point C maximum negative shear force occurs and when the tail just touches the positive portion maximum positive shear force occurs it is similar to the case of multiple concentrated load okay so when the tail just touches the positive portion maximum positive portion maximum positive shear stress and when the uh, head just touches the negative portion maximum negative shear force occur and the span of the length or uh, span of the beam uh, UDL is 5 meter and the portion on which we have to find the shear stress is 6 meter so considering the length of portion as x and length of the uh, UDL as D what we see is X is greater than D okay the portion or the section is greater than the span of the UDL so uh, it will be somehow like this the head just touches the negative portion or the just uh, touches the positive portion also we can say being shorter than the span of the section uh, this uh, y1 and this as y0 so y0 is equal to a by l a being 8 meter so 6 meter and span as 15 6 by 5 6 divided by 5 i get 0 0.4 similarly y1 can be calculated with the property of similar triangle 
y1 by this span this is 1 meter 6 5 yes 1 meter is equal to uh, y naught which is 0 0.4 divided by the span of this triangle and it is 6 so this implies y1 is equal to 0.4 divided by 6 multiplied by 1 this is 0 0.067 okay this being a trapezoidal area okay and for udl the basic difference between point load and udl is that the loading or the magnitude of loading in ild for udl is calculated by multiplying the uh, load intensity with the area of the trapezoid and for point load uh, it is multiplied with the perpendicular just below the point load so in this case maximum negative shear force will be equal to trapezoidal area of the trapezoid that is y1 plus y0 by 2 multiply by the span that is 5 meter okay this is the area of the trapezoid multiply by the load intensity that is 40 kilo newton meter so y1 being 0 0.67 and this being 0.4 divided by 2 multiply by the span 5 multiply by 40 we get 46.67 which is the uh, maximum negative shear force for this beam okay now taking into account of the positive shear force okay we have to if uh, another point you have to remember if it was longer that is the udl being longer than the span of the portion then the remaining portion for example if this was long in this direction okay so if it was long this portion up to this portion it is taken into account but remaining this portion is not considered okay this point has to be uh, remembered while const uh, while dealing with the udl of longer span so this is the maximum negative shear force taking into account of positive shear force so let me do over here okay, it will be easier to compare this is the span of the beam this being the shear for ild for shear force diagram and as i have said for positive shear force maximum positive shear force the tail of the udl should just touch the positive portion this is 6 15 so 9 meter this being only 5 meter obviously it is shorter than the span of the portion and again we can calculate this y naught and this y1 y naught being b by l b being 9 meter by 15 9 by 15 0 0.6 y1 being using the property of similar triangle uh, 0 0.6 multiply by the span that is 9 multiply by this span or this span 9 minus 5 that is 4 0.6 divided by 9 multiply by 4 I get 0 0.26 so the area under the UDL is this portion y naught and y1 our trapezoidal portion so area of trapezoidal multiply by the load we can calculate the maximum positive shear force which is equal to 40 being the load intensity area of trapezoidal y naught 0 0.6 plus y1 divided by 2 multiply by this length of the trapezoid that is 5 meter so 0.6 plus 0.226 divided by 2 multiply by 5 multiply by 40 so 86.67 kilonewton which is the maximum positive shear force okay